And hello again, everyone who has been watching the show now since the Super Bowl obviously knows that my name is not Captain Jack. <laughs> my name is Raider Transplant, and I have been manning the ship as co-captain to the Captain Jack Rackham channel and network on Roku and Facebook and Twitter, Twitch, you name it, wherever Captain Jack is being seen from, especially from all of the people in the black hole and all of Raider Nation. Uh, they all know that Captain Jack had to take a little bit of a hiatus. He has been showing up on Thursdays for everyone. So if you missed last, this week's Thursday show, it was epic because on that show, near the end, we even had Hollywood Raider make an appearance. Power Raider made an appearance. Um, uh, uh, IE Raider, Inland Empire, they made an appearance. So uh, it's it's definitely, you know, Captain Jack, everybody knows him. And I'm just happy to help out. My final show is going to be next week, Sunday. So we're doing the counting down to saying goodbye to Raider Transplant. Uh, remember again, guys, that the reason why I always wear green is because green is the color of organ donation. And April is Donate Life Month. Uh, it's something that I always share with everyone, that my life was saved 20 months ago uh, by the sacrifice of my donor and their family. And I'm living right now because of a second chance at life of a liver transplant. I was born with a disease that 70% of Filipinos have and don't even know it. Uh, and I was coming, and uh, the guys that all of you who've been watching this now since February all know I was coming from the professional fight world uh, and thought every I was healthy. And then that July 4th weekend of 2022, I was told that less than 30 days. Um, this is a topic I've covered at the Protect Shield podcast with Chris Kimber when he had me on as a guest. I've talked about it with Captain Jack. So um, we're not going to talk about that too much. But I just want to make sure you guys knew that the reason why you're seeing a lot of these special guests coming in and the one tonight I'm so excited about um, is we're getting that countdown down. Cam Jack will be around. He might he even told me that he might pop in today because he's interested to maybe see our guests. So you never know. But the guest for tonight, you will notice that the green hat I am wearing is a very different green hat, everyone. This green hat is not the bright green hat you normally see me because this green hat is the Super Bowl 15 green hat. If you take a look at right there, it has the XB, the XV, right? We beat the Eagles. You also see I am wearing the Super Bowl 11 homage shirt, January 9th, 1977. For all of you old school, uh, no, we beat the. Uh, Purple People Eaters, an amazing uh, time. And the guest I'm bringing on started watching the Raiders and became a part of the Raider Nation around that late 70s period, moving into the 80s. And he loved football so much that uh, this person became the best running back in the nation at a junior college at the time, uh, 1994, San Diego Mason. Shout out to San Diego Mason over there in uh, California. He was a captain, best running back, to which word then he ended up getting a full ride scholarship to the Montana State Bobcats um, and was in that uh, uh, great team. Um, and being able to actually do it at that level that's what I get pumped up about. When I get a chance to talk to people who played it at that level, now when I'm asking them a question about what's going on with the Raiders running back room, I actually am getting a chance to talk to a person who will give me the insight that I would need to have. So I'm very excited to bring him on. Gentleman's name, if you guys want to start looking it up uh, while I am doing this intro, is T Terrence Crump. Mr. Crump is also known by Turf of the Turf and Raider Rundown show. Um, that You can watch that on The Ultimate Raider Fan 32. Uh, 32 is an easy number to remember because that was also his college number when he played at Montana State. Um, but, uh, but anyhow, I'm mostly excited about this show because 
for all of you who do know my background and know who I am, uh, having a Raider Nation person that is so passionate about the sport as this gentleman is, who also is a 15-year Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, someone who's been studying the craft, someone who studied the craft of Muay Thai for seven years. And this guy is a huge boxing uh, aficionado too. I, I'm, I'm in heaven. And I, I will do my best to all the people listening tonight and all, all you folks um, who are re-watching this to keep this two hours to about football. It's going to really be tough to do it, but I'm going to do it uh, because, uh, because having a chance to actually have a guest who knows martial arts, who is a martial artist, who is a black belt, who does understand combat sports uh, within that level is such a treat to me. So I'm so honored to have him. I'm going to bring him on. Turf himself, Mr. Terrence Crump, the ultimate Raider fan, 32. Welcome hey. to the show. <laughs> what a what a what an outstanding entrance, man! I thank you so much, man. That you you definitely made me blush back there. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, you already know, uh, Turf, that um, just like last week when I had Papa Rundown on, and yeah. I had uh, our guy Joshua Johnson. For all of you who don't know who he is, <laughs> when I was getting him to guess. He was so vague, Turf. He was so vague. And I was like, hey, your name's Joshua, right? And he wouldn't <laughs> respond back. And, and I get it, right? I, I, I remember my first um, my first guesting with Protect the Shield podcast. Yeah. Shout out to our guy, the, the head of the Raider Syndicate over there, uh, yes, Chris Kimber, right? Yes, sir. Um, Chris in the building. He, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He had me on for five and a half hours. And in that five and a half hours, I got to be there with Captain Jack on on the Protect the Shield podcast. I got to be there with Stuart Schwaggert, wow. which everybody knows, you know, third round pick, one of the last yes. people that Al Davis actually chose on the draft. And yes. it got pretty emotional because we were talking about life and death. We were talking about, you know, um, whatever level of your life you reach, that's just a moment of your life. So you shouldn't be ashamed of it when you're not there anymore. And I'm, so happy that you're on the show tonight because as a martial artist, I believe you understand this idea that yes. just because you got a black belt when you were 22 <laughs> doesn't mean you stop doing martial arts because when you're 52, your body's completely different. And, and really something I always used to say to all of my students that I would train when they were a white belt is I would say, this is going to be a long journey. And if you could just show up, we're going to get there. When we get to the black belt, one of the first things I would tell them, uh, Turf, is if it was you, I would say, Mr. Crump, you realize that now you're a black belt. All this really means is you're, just, you're a white belt all over again. <laughs> and it's just now you're going to have a 15-year perspective on what a, being a white belt is. But part of the reason why you are a white belt again is because it's been 15 years. So since it's been 15 years, you're a different person you with a different body. Yeah. And we got to relearn all of it. So it's not easier. It's not easier when you're black belt. It it's harder not. when you're black belt. You are 100% correct, sir. Uh, it's tougher and tougher and tougher. Even though you have the tricks of the trade and you can still breathe and you know what I mean? Get your rest no matter who it is to an extent, right? Because let's be honest, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I've trained for 16 years and I do have my black belt after that. But there are levels to this. This is, I mean, the levels are astronomically different. Uh, you you will have a 17-year-old blue belt dominate and terrorize a 15-year-old black belt. Not me, meaning that I trained for 15 years and got my black I'm talking about a guy that literally has had his black belt for 15 years, and he'll get dominated by a child. It's... The game, the level of play now compared to what it used to be in the past when I very first started. Oh my, oh my. And 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 I'll say this too, you know, um, for all of you guys who are watching, I have Terrence Crump, best running back, 1994 of, of yes, all of junior college in the United States. And I, I want to get into this because 
you, as you know, the first segment of questions I'm going to ask you is all about running backs. And that, yes. that is one of the major reasons why I wanted to bring you on. But I, I'm going to surprise you a little bit here. And, and again, mm -hmm. in them days, you know, it's not like uh, there used to be so much footages where everybody's got the phones, right? Right. But I got to watch you play, actually, because I had to dig deep. I had to dig deep in some of them Montana State, um, uh, like, local channels where they were showing it. Yeah. I watched uh, one of the games I, I enjoyed watching, and you guys almost won, but it was a heartbreaker. Uh, your your uh, uh, quarterback, Rob Thompson, at uh, the time, I know uh, you're did, you're did not get it. But if, I, if I'm not mistaken, this was either – 97, 97 or 98 97. But it was the montana versus 98. montana state game and number 32 man was right there yeah doing that uh talk can you yeah, talk to me a little bit about the game flow of because of, for you guys who don't know rob compson is quite good as a yes. college quarterback very Absolutely. mobile um yes. but you were you were a part of a running back room that's kind of like what's happening with the raiders now where if i'm not mistaken you had Kinnaman, you had that one kid, Tyler. Le oh Le my! Hume, yes. Right. Um. You had. I. It was Craig Gale still a part of the. Galley, yes. No, this Galley. Guy, this, guy, this guy. You do your research, sir. I oh. actually still talk to all of these guys, man. And wow, uh, Tyler, Lathan, and Tyler. He's from Diamond Bar, California. Let me tell y'all, ladies and gentlemen. This kid had to be 160 pounds soaking wet, maybe 5'6", and I'm letting y'all know right now I've never seen anything like him. He got his number retired. He had some injuries at Montana State, so it didn't go, you know, as planned for him. But, oh, my God. He's by far one of the most talented runners I've ever seen in my entire life, period. And that's saying a lot. Turf, I want you to keep going, but I want to make this – I want to set the table for yeah. the group. When you played during those years, like mm -hmm. in 94, you're the best running back in the entire country at junior college. And then Montana State Bobcats said, full scholarship, man, we need you. And then you come in. Is it fair to say that those injuries, like you're talking about with Tyler and yourself when you got injured? Because during that time, honestly, going to college, it wasn't like the medical room was as amazing as I see it now when you go into yes. UNLV. I mean, you can go into UNLV and you could be ballroom dancing and walk in <laughs> to uh and not to say and i don't say that that ballroom dancing isn't hard ballroom dancing right. is extremely difficult what i'm saying though is you could walk into those rooms now and you can get fixed up right away but you probably played with a ton of injuries which yes. compounded it to making it worse so please talk but but i really want to know what that evan flow was like of a back and forth game with an in-state rival but go go ahead Man, Sorry to I, go. I gotta tell you guys look a lot of people talk about football rivals and so forth. Montana versus Montana State is the third longest co college rival in history, I believe. You know, you can quote me on that. Go look it up. But when I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there is no other game that I can ever think of that I was a part of. And we've played, right, some big teams. You know, we played the Colorado States, Boise States. This is back in the 90s, right, when those teams were specifically 1A. And we were still one double A. That's what they called it back then. Now it's called the FCS series. But that game, I, I'm just telling you, I, it was the most electric thing I've ever been a part of. I, I can't explain it. Uh, it's Montana State, just the state in general, is all about football 100%. It's really all they have. They don't have any other, right, professional sports or anything to that nature. So when you're talking about this game, it means everything. And I have to slip this in here when I talk about this because, you know, I don't even know if we're even going to get around uh, any of these talking points, if you will, when it comes to, you know, the rookies and stuff and who's going to be drafted. But one of the reasons why it bothered me so much when it came to Caleb Williams in that game where he got caught crying with his mom is because guess what? We all was crying during that game in 97, where we got beat by a 60-yard field goal in snow with seconds left on the clock, I would have gotten a ring for the first time in my life. I would have been going to the playoffs for the first time in my life, and it came away that way. But guess what happened with that team? Every last one of us walked back into that locker room together. 
together. Cried, did what we had to do. Then we came out of the locker room and did what we had to do. I, I just... I just felt some kind of way when I saw that from Caleb, not being around his team, being around his teammates when they're going to need him most, right? You already know this is the last game for some guys forever, right? And 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 it's so ironic I say that because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, that was my last game. And that's why I disappeared from the Raider Nation, if you will, from football in general for a decade because it was a hard thing to process for me that my career was over. And I'm, but, so, and I'm so glad you said that, Turf, yeah. because that is one of the things that if you guys got to watch Protect the Shield and you got to go back two months, it's a five and a half hour long with me, Captain Jack, and Stuart Schwaggart. When I started telling Stu that the fact that he walked the path that he did should not discount. It, it, it happens to athletes when, when I was coaching them. I could see it happening where I get it, man. You didn't, you lost the championship belt. I understand, but you also won the championship belt. And now let's take it to another level. You got to fight for the championship belt more than once. Now let's take it to another level. After that, you got to be a pro fighter. Now let's take it to a life. And you, if you keep peeling those onions turf, what you accomplished at that age of your life, at that stage of your life, Right. was a part of what makes you this great person that you are now. But Absolutely. it isn't all of you. Right. And this is what I was saying to the young man, your guy, the guy you're mentoring right now, Rundown, where I said, Sir. are you kidding me, man? Like, do you know, like, how, for me, 20 months of liver transplant recovery, for doctors to look at me and say, yeah, you're not going back to that lifestyle anymore. Right. I can't, because they cut you in half turf, so I have no core muscles. I can't do jujitsu. I can't be on the mat, because... If I get an infection, I get sick. I mean, transplant life is extremely difficult. And I've had the Raider Nation backing me from the time I was recovering there at Riverside, California with the Inland Empire there. And mm -hmm. almost every person that was drawing my blood or a nurse or a doctor, they were all Raider fans, right? So to have that throughout my recovery, learning how to walk and everything. Wow. But you hit a level in college football, like you said, where you cried with your teammates, you you bled with your teammates. It felt yes. it was it felt like football. And you are a warrior for that. That's why I, you know, that Montana State game, like I said, man, you like you you pegged me right. I, I, I do my research, baby. I was watching highlights, right? Now, I hope here's the another man, because I know they're gonna be super impressed. You name, I mean, dude, Rob Con I just saw Rob Carnes and I, I talked to him hey, all the He time. was good. Can you okay? He you know what? Since good. we're gonna talk about quarterbacks in the second segment, I might bring right. his name back up. But yeah, sure. in your opinion, because I felt like he did he was good. He had he had the stuff to actually what do you think? Is was it an injury? Was it mental? What what do you think happened in this later part? I I'm going to guess it was probably the mental side of things. You're, you're talking about a kid from Montana, right? He's he's probably thinking, I don't belong here, right? You know what I mean? I'm guessing because I've never had a chance to ask him that, actually, because it just never came across my mind. Exactly. To, to, you know, after, you know, after college and, you know, hitting the pros and seeing if you could get in and if that worked out or not. I didn't get a chance to hit him, you know, because we just immediately went back to the good old times, man. I exactly. mean. Exactly. And, that's and that what is what happens, right? You don't even talk that's, about we the, don't. the stuff because at the like I said, at the end of the day, what you like, I'm sure you look back at those times now and you go, wow, man, I was the best running back <laughs> out of the entire nation <laughs> for <laughs> junior college. So much yes. so, right. so much so that they had to pay you. I mean, if I can only imagine what kind of money you could have gotten as an NIL if I know, NIL right? back then, <laughs> right? Okay. Right. But, but I know I say this and I also, and again, when I'm doing, when I told you, man, I dig deep. So I was just having lunch with, uh, he just retired, but Las Vegas football head coach, uh, Fernando Carmona and his son, Fernando Carmona Jr. Mm -hmm. Who went into the transfer portal as an left tackle from San Jose state. This is one of the kids you we're going to watch out for going into the next two years. Mm -hmm. Goes in uh, as a junior now. He's going to be a junior at Arkansas, starting left tackle now. That's why they wanted him. 
And I don't want to talk about the NIL, but let me just say that they wanted him. Yeah. This is a guy who maybe was the guy that's replacing a Dalton Wagner type or something, right? right. But right. this this kid could play. Fernando Carmona Jr., go yeah. look him up. I'm just, Absolutely. I'm very, I'm very good friends with his with his father, but um, me and his father, we don't even really, we talk more about how his dad had to suffer through a stroke and almost dying three years ago. And, uh, and, and how he's alive today and I'm able to yeah. have lunch with him and how I was only given 30 days to live, you know, just 21 months ago. Like, like, so we don't, you know, like, like, uh, something that I'm going to share with everyone soon turf is pictures of my brother who is in Hollywood, uh, Mike yeah. Avalon, amazing, um, amazing brother, a, a, an amazing person to have in, in, in anybody's life. And I'm so blessed to have him as my little brother. This guy took the reins was my power of attorney was doing everything. He dropped everything he was doing in Hollywood just to take care of me wow. during that time. Right. Mm -hmm. He, when I, when I was in the hospital, he had put money into the Raider foundation so that I could have a brick in, wow. in the illusion. Yeah. I hadn't gotten to see it because they didn't lay the brick. They laid the brick down at the same time. I got rushed to the hospital. Damn. Man. So, so just this weekend was the first time I, I saw it. It was very emotional, Turf. It was it was very fight. emotional for me because to see my brother, I mean, like it's connected to the Raider Nation. I was gonna get a hold of the foundation and tell them my story and right. let them know, you know, what all of this means to me. But uh, I mean, again, man, the, the Raider awesome. Nation brings all of us together, but it brings stars like you, like you, Terrence Crump. I gotta, I gotta make sure you know that that I'm a fan of when I started watching those highlights and how tough you are. So now I'm gonna bring up something that might might hit you in the heart a little bit. <laughs> 1997, if I'm not mistaken, there was this game in where you guys were just having a hard time. Maybe the year before, I know you were injured. I think in 1995. I yep. think it was 95. Um, that 96 team had a lot. It was pretty deep because Rob Thompson might have been just a freshman or at the time. I know that uh, Tyler in 96 was, I think, a freshman. Yes, uh, he was a true freshman. As, as, he yeah, as a true <laughs> freshman <laughs> as, as a running back. And yes. he had skills, man. You know who also had skills, too, was Kinnaman. Kinnaman yeah. had some skills. Eric Kinnaman, I, I love him. His, his wife, they met in college. She was a cheerleader. They're still together today. They got two boys. I believe they're in Nebraska. Yeah. yeah. No, if you guys watch, I mean, again, it's you'd have to really like it. But I, you know, I, I, uh, the more I watch Terrence Crump play ball, the more I became a fan. So I am honored to have you on, and I, 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 I appreciate thank you for that, your time man. Uh, tonight. So I'm going to ask you about this game, and and again, man, I, if, if it tugs at your heart a little bit, <laughs> you know, it, it's all right. You yeah. guys were having a hard time in beating a team like Eastern Washington University. Mm -hmm. It's so difficult. And in 1997, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> as underdogs, Terrence Crump <laughs> helped lead the team back, back from behind. I don't know how you find <laughs> To <laughs> win the game. And check this out, ladies and gentlemen. It was Terrence Crump's Touchdown, <laughs> Rob Thompson to Terrence Cup. Wow, uh, 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 you were you were you were coming off like a like an Amir Abdullah off the side or something, right? And then, <laughs> the, you know, there's, the, hey, there's, the, a, it, there's, it there's a there's a name momentum. for it. The there's defense for gets it. pumped. All right, yeah. Uh, Eastern Washington loses in a huge upset. Huge upset. Montana State University. Yeah. Talk to me, Terrence Crump. Hey, Talk you, to me about that tailback, that you, hero, that you, game, uh, and how much love you and the entire team had out there. You're an amazing dude right now, man. <laughs> you got me lit up. I I don't yeah, I would have never guessed you would have figured that out. I can't even find stuff like this when I look online. Uh, you know, why I don't know, but you're you're absolutely right. And the fun thing about this one, that that touchdown, that play is very well known and famous. Uh, I didn't make it up. In fact, it may I, I'm pretty sure it was Rob Thompson that that dubbed this play. It, it was Rob Thompson. I, I, Listen I'm to what I, I, I tell it, was, you. it was so cool. It was, would, it was would, very cool. Yes, I would come into the game 
and you heard two words for the play. Everybody knew what it was. Everybody knew what they were doing. And there was no questions asked. It was called the Crump Dump. <laughs> that was the play. That out, I scored probably five or six times on that throughout okay, set, the year. Set the table for people who don't even know what, in, in a football terminology, right. when you talk about the Crump Dump, <laughs> explain it like you're explaining it to one of the kids that you teach football to like this Got is the play you're coming off the backfield like yes. explain it you're a tailback like even yeah. explain that because that wordage doesn't even exist anymore because people just call it running back but you are what we would call a true tailback and i'm, that is I'm correct. talking about them old west coast yes. offense roger craig you know <laughs> like like I, you know but talk to us turf talk to you, us you are absolutely right man and shout out to my fullback from junior college uh dre sears shout out to my fullback in college tt ryan and uh mccormany these man i i was a true tailback i you know what helped me was was a i always knew what everybody was doing i knew everybody's route i knew everybody's blocking assignment i knew where the hole would be before the play started. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, honestly, I was an overachiever. Um, you're talking 5'8", 200 pounds. I, I had no business doing the things I was doing. To be, you're looking at Emmett Smith, and clearly I had nothing clear to what Emmett did with his right exact side. We ran the exact I was actually faster than Emmett Smith um, and may have even been a tad bit stronger. Um, I actually had a goal. So there were levels at Montana State uh, for every position. And the, the highest level was a gold shirt. And not many people got gold shirts for their position. Turf got a gold shirt for his position. But I can assure you it was just one of those things where when I make my mind up to it, you know, I do it. So back to the play, I want to make sure I explain this. So in a true tailback fashion, uh, I'm coming out of the eye on this. Sometimes it depends. It could be a near. So near is where the fullback is directly behind. If the formation is to the right, the full the tight the tight, uh, tailback is to the right of the fullback. Uh, if it's far, it's the opposite. But this particular play, it was eye formation. It's a fake to me actually, and I actually go through the middle of the line, or I should say a B gap, probably B gap, and veer out for a five yard out. Uh, kind of bend it, not a traditional five yard out where you know you 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 make a hard cut and a you know a square if you will, more of a rounded, uh you know out into the flats, and that's why they called it the dump because it's in the flats on the side right by the sideline and it's a little dump. It's a little three five yard pass. It depends, right? Sometimes we would turn that up and you call that a wheel, right? So you you're you're running to the outside, you turn and you fake. But now you cut it up as that defender bites. Um, I've gotten a couple of those as well during that 97 season. But, yes, that play was officially dubbed the crump dump. And I can't tell you how many times in the game I would just be running in, and that's all I would say, crump dump, crump and, dump and, on three. And, and, and I, that, I love that story because even when you said, like, some of these newer kids now, they'll understand because of Madden when we say, oh, well, he was running a wheel route, right? right. You right. know, like – you know, a Josh Jacobs coming off the back, but really, man, I, I, I think about the eighties and I'm like, no, you know, Karen's Crump was like a Roger Craig for the Montana state Bobcat <laughs> football. I mean, he did everything. And I, I even on that month, that, that rivalry game, I saw you do a lot of things that were very intricate to help out your teammates, to help out, um, like a Kinnaman or help out a, a Tyler in, in that particular game. And, and these are things that, again, football, it, it's, it's fluid and it's gotten stronger and, and whatnot, but some of the, you know, you could really appreciate a person's work if you pay attention to what is happening and what they're doing. And, it, and like I told you, even though in the martial arts world, you've said a lot of uh, very kind words, uh, mm -hmm. both, uh, you know, about me, when it comes to the boxing and the martial arts world, but I'm yeah. a fan of football. I can't really say that I'm a fan of fight sports right. because fight sports was my job. Life. Right. So, right. Yeah. It was, it was a lifestyle. I, I, I would say when I was younger, but it's different when you know how the sausage is made. Right. Yes, I don't know how the sausage is made when it comes to Raider football. <laughs> and when I talk to someone like you, I get excited because you're explaining to me how you actually saw it happen. It's yeah. the same as if, I was explaining to you 
well, this is how Pacquiao actually knocked out Ricky Hatton. Right. It was this play, and this was the move, and we yes. ran, it was ran over and over again. It was right? set up. It was like, set up. It was a setup, and <laughs> he didn't see it coming. It was actually coming earlier in the round, but he didn't see it. Um, yep. and, and again, I, I don't, we're already at 30 minutes and <laughs> we still got nine, three segments to go. So I promise though, uh, uh, if you're joining us right now, I'm with, uh, Terrence Crump star running back of San Diego Mason and, Mason. Yep. uh, Montana state Bobcats. You guys look it up again, you know? Um, I think I'm surprised turf tonight with some you of the did. that you I actually, definitely surprised that I actually know about them. That's um, crazy. That yeah, is yeah, no, I, 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 I know. I get very surprised, Turf, when somebody really does the research on me, and then they bring up stuff where I'm like, "You knew I went to China and tested for uh, front of the world kung fu headquarters." Wow, that's that's wow. awesome because I, I don't, I, I definitely don't brag about it. I don't talk about that. You know what I mean? Like so. Right. Well, right. I, I, I told you I was going to surprise you with some of these things you that did. I do. You um, definitely did that, so you did. Um, and and. <laughs> You know, if you're just joining us now, I'm uh, please, please, guys, subscribe to his channel. This is a man who actually knows what he's talking about. He's not a talking head. He's not just spitting opinions. The man played at the high level of football, understands how it works as a running back coming out of the backfield and on an intellectual level. More importantly, actually understands what it's like to be a running back captain, seeing the field understanding how the offense uh, and the defenses work. Um, I, I bring up the Eastern uh, uh, Washington University game where you guys upset them because the defense gets a lot of credit for that. I'm trying to remember your teammate's name, who's the linebacker who got the interception, and then, you know, you guys ended up winning. But mm -hmm. it was your touchdown <laughs> that kind of made everybody go, Dude, we have a chance here. This is this is how you know I, I remember this like it was yesterday. And again, it's one of my homeboys, man. Jeff Alexander is that linebacker you're referring to. <laughs> His name is Jeff Alexander. <laughs> yeah, no, and, 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 that, and that's what I mean is you were a part of these legendary type moments. And when I was talking to Fernando Car Carmona Sr., whose son, Fernando Carmona Jr., uh, committed to Arkansas, He's going to play mm -hmm. his junior year, and then we'll see what happens. He might be good enough to be first round oh, this year exactly. in the draft. But, you know, he might play it out all the way to the senior year. But when I asked him, I said, well, you know, UCLA asked for him, and um, BYU asked for him. Ohio State wanted him. Ohio State wanted him. They were like, we want this kid, right? Right. And, and, and I asked him, I said, what do you think it was that made him uh, take it? He goes, because Arkansas was a football town. It felt real. It All is. people cared about there was football. Yep. And that was you. Like, that was you, Terrence Crump. Yes. On Santa State Bobcats, I'm sure you walked around and people are like, oh, man, it's the Crump dump guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like you, you know what I mean? Right? Yeah, so, I do. I do. And, yeah. And that, le that level of, of, of accomplishment, also that level of notoriety, that level of fame, Mm -hmm. It's not things that you forget, and it's things that are translatable for you to be able to explain to people like us who did not play football, who did not get to the level that you got to, and understand, oh, okay, that's why he's saying maybe it's a better idea if we draft so-and-so instead right. of so-and-so, right? right? So Absolutely. So when I say this, I, I want our first segment, guys, if you're just joining us, I'm with the Ultimate Raider Fan 32. Please subscribe to him on youtube i am telling you you're missing out if you don't subscribe right now to the ultimate raider fan 32 uh because this is a man who will actually explain it to you so that you don't have to sound like you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> and when and when I, I i'm i'm wondering about and again as a fan as a fan mr crump all right mm -hmm. i i am just I'm watching the Raiders and I'm watching the moves that they made. And we signed Alexander Madison. And as a fan, although <laughs> again, as a fan who kind of knows how to scout and break people down, because right. that is what I used to do as a profession. Also in the, both in the uh, martial arts, MMA world, karate world, and in the boxing world, um, I was doing it for fun. It's like my hobby. I'm doing it for fun for football. And I'm like, right. Alexander Madison, even though he was supposed to be the guy that could be 
you know, taking over for Dalvin Cook. Right. Didn't do so well. And in my opinion, it's because they were trying to force feed him into a zone scheme when really the guy runs gap and he runs power. Like that's his yes. style. Like that. I mean, I'm like, you know, like if that would literally be like me trying to force a jujitsu practitioner to go right. knock someone out when right. I would be like, hey, throw these couple of strikes, uh, uh, Terrence. And then what's going to happen is he's going to do this. He's going to offer you his head and then go do your thing. Right. <laughs> like that's the way it's supposed right. to be when you're when you're talking to a, a professional athlete or an amateur athlete on how they set something up. So right. Zamir White, who I was pleasantly surprised and very happy, especially with the Chiefs game mm -hmm. when we beat them over there in uh, Kansas City in December. But even in that game, man, I was like, gap in the uh, power tends to work for this kid a lot better, Zamir White, right? right? And right. then I have watched the Britton Brown tapes from UCLA, and I'm like, I've been this kid's good. Brown. Yeah, I've been, this kid I've is good, but he's a power gap guy too. So yes. can you explain to us fans who are trying to understand this, why is it that it feels like our O-line, like a Dylan Parham, who's kind of smaller than 300 pounds, Right. He's fit more for a zone scheme or, or uh, Colton Miller could probably do both. Cause he's, he's our captain. He's a star, but Andre James, I mean, he was kind of getting yeah, kind of eaten up. Wow. I don't know if he's such a power gap guy. And then now we don't even have a right side yet. I mean, what right. are we supposed to do? So explain to us what's happening with is the Raiders and Getsy going to do power gap and figure out the O-line. Or are they going to try to force these running backs to do zone? Right. When none of them are really good zone at zone. Back. I don't know. I don't. You, well, you, you tell us. Yes. There, well, there's one big caveat to this that uh, gets overlooked a lot, in my opinion. And I can't say I can explain it. I can explain it enough for people to understand. Um, because you can look at it at any sport and anything in general. But. There are just some people that don't do well as the guy, as the man, right? And again, it's very simple and easy to see this in coaching, right? That offensive, defensive coordinator that everybody's interviewing for that, you know, head coaching job. And then they go and get the head coaching job and they just stink up the place, right? And it's because you know what? It's just not your thing. You're you're just better at the the coordinator position as opposed to the to the head coach. This is no different for players in any sport. It, it it could be psychologically, mentally. I don't know what it is, but I know for a fact for myself when it came to the game of basketball, I was one hundred percent better coming off of the bench. If you ever started me, I had the worst game ever. Probably fouled. You know, had more fouls than you can imagine in the first. Half. I can't explain it, but even if it's two, three minutes into the first quarter and you get me out there, I'm a star. Can't be stopped. I look at Addison the same exact way. Um, and the thing is, if you are a gifted running back, any any style is going is, is not going to matter. Right. Because you'll be able to adapt accordingly. And it's all about how you gel with your offensive linemen and understanding and knowing what those guys do best, what they don't do good at, right? And where you're going to be able to get away with certain things as a running back. Because honestly, you can see the hole before the play is snapped. And the only reason that that'll change is because the defense changes mid-snap, right? Things to that nature where they've timed things and there's just not enough time to process it on the offensive side. And it causes those issues, and you see a, a you know no no you know no rushing yards, whatever the case may be. Uh, but yeah, with Addison, he clearly is better off the bench, not being the man. And 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 it really actually doesn't matter if it's zone or or you know what I'm saying, just straight up smash mouth off tackle gap. You know he can do both. I, I won't say the same for Zeus because you're absolutely right. There are some guys that aren't built that way. See, again, Jacobs, he was a guy that could kind of do both. Yeah, he uh, was he a was, workhorse, you would say, right? Exactly. Like, he, he was, was an a true, every down back. Yeah, yes. a true every down back it, ver versus the way you're explaining it. Because I understood the Amir Abdullah signing, again, as a fan, not right. as someone like you who played at that level. But right. as a fan, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. You guys are getting Abdullah because you want to do the crump dump. 
basically, right? Like, or and, and, and one of the things I do like, and I don't know if you knew this, uh, uh, uh turf, yeah, Abdullah. The reason why he does uh, some of them taekwondo high level kicks when he scores a touchdown is because he also does martial arts. I didn't know that. Hey That's man, you awesome. gotta look at some of them touchdowns when he does a flip kick. Yeah, right? yeah. a lot. A lot yeah. of these guys right now too are uh, are playing uh, or are training with uh, someone who was uh, the son and a, a trainer to a world champion like a uh, heavyweight world champion uh, Joseph Parker. But like Nate Hobbs, I've seen is training boxing yeah. right now, and a lot of these other. Uh, guys are starting to train Jack Jones might be starting to train boxing and um, yes. and even like a Max Crosby he already sparred Sean Strickland who yes. was at, at, you know last year he was the the uh, light heavyweight champion of the world for the UFC and you know you got Max uh, so again these type of things can translate so absolutely as, 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 I know that you know me in the martial arts boxing world but as just a football fan I'm asking yeah. you because you're the expert right why what, like what do you think they're gonna force like is ap's plan to ask cadillac williams who's our running back coach right uh he was the former interim coach of auburn and james craig our o-line coach and luke getsy to say to them hey man i need you to take these running back by committee and make them all learn to zone Got in it. a season is that what they're doing? I, I I don't I don't know what they're doing to be honest. From that respect, I will tell you this though. One fun fact is our offensive line coach played at Colorado State University, and that's the first game I think I ever played at Montana State was against him <laughs> when they played when he played at Colorado State, and they have four, they have five guys from that team make it to the league, and they all five I think were all Americans. Uh, so yeah, shout out to. Uh, Craig, Craig? Craig. Yes, yeah, he's uh, yeah. It, it, he's best. Work. He's best known for you guys who are just listening to this right now. Um, we're at the Captain Jack Rackham uh, channel, and our special guest for tonight is uh, Terrence Crump Turf from the Sir. Ultimate Raider Fan Thirty Two channel. This guy is almost got to a thousand subscriptions. <laughs> I need you there. people. I I think I need like eight more people to just. Press yeah. subscribe. Come on, y'all. Just one Come time. On. <laughs> Patriot, get some of those folks out there who hasn't subscribed yet. All right. get them. I need Cool Kev to get people to subscribe. To make Pete, John Leon bring some <laughs> folks to the <laughs> Ultimate Raider Fan 32 YouTube channel. And please get them to subscribe. Because I would love to see Turf pop a champagne bottle tonight. Good night. If, yes, sir. If, hey, if, so, if, to be honest, man, I have to bring this up. There are a lot more players in general it doesn't matter what sport doing martial arts right now i i can't i'm i cannot count how many times i've seen offense and defensive linemen come into the dojo and, and sign up you know and then they're going off right because they're in college they get it they understand right uh it's it's a necessity with the the ability that these kids have today you have to have something extra you have to have something you know that's gonna stick out and put you over the edge because otherwise you are toast. I'm just I, you know, hop keto. You need to wouldn't, understand wouldn't you hand say, though, Wouldn't you say though, turf, mm -hmm. having practiced and continue to practice the form of Brazilian jiu-jitsu and being a black belt and having already done it now for almost 16 years. Uh -huh. It's more of the mental aspect that really benefits a lot of these professional athletes when it comes to the martial arts more than the physical aspect. Because even when you were playing in college, would you say if you would have started martial arts in high school, then had the martial arts mentality going into college, how deadly would that 5A 200 pound running back be? It would have been game over, to be honest. Uh, it's the one thing I wish I, I absolutely did. Uh, you know, I had the chance to do wrestling in high school, passed on it. Uh, hockey, another one that I loved watching even as a kid growing up, but passed on it. And if there are regrets or, any, you know, anything along those lines, those are the things that I think about. Why didn't I do those things? Because I actually had people around me. There's, so one of my best friends growing up, like our, I should say our, because where I grew up from in Windsor, Connecticut, very small town, special uh, oldest town in Connecticut. 
Uh, but yeah, we have the family called the Jones family. And this kid, Anwar Jones, his dad, Joe Jones, Joseph Jones, he made up his own style of jujitsu. I knew none of this. I knew none of this growing up. I thought it was always just karate. But he's got his own form. They call it Joe Jitsu. I I'm telling you, they ran security the whole nine. And everybody knew Anwar was maybe 120 pounds soaking what, but everybody knew, don't mess with that kid. It's over. He was winning national chips all across everywhere, starting in like the sixth, seventh grade. When, he you, was when, when you talk about stories like that, yeah, don't you feel that you being a martial artist as you got better in BJJ, you mm-hmm. probably were less inclined to get into a fight because you knew what you could do to someone, right? 100%. 100%. And I can, I can speak to how that kid feels because as, as you know about me, um, I started tr- teaching uh, Kempo Karate at, 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 at 14, right? Um, I already started martial arts when I was in the Philippines and uh, when the People Revolution happened uh, over there in 1985. Um, that's when you heard Corey uh, Aquino talk to the to the entire world about hey you know marcos is doing these terrible things murdered my husband um yeah. my grandfather was one of the politicians that got assassinated like wow. shot in the head right um Man. so he wasn't able to make it here in the united states and in 85 my mother who raised as a single uh parent um made sure that i kept doing martial arts because she felt martial arts was something that you can keep you mentally mentally stable but also man look I'm Filipino. I wasn't no 5'8", 200-pound <laughs> athletic guy. I, I was small, man. I, I was a small guy, so coming to the United States at that time, probably a good idea because I might get picked on, right? Anyways, so um, by the time I did turn 14, I was already starting to teach it. And in 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 teaching martial arts, like I said, like going to high school from my freshman year to my senior year, I remember... Uh, a story like the one you just shared about that kid, right? Yeah. That I, I think I was a sophomore. I no, I was a junior. I don't. I I I have my dojo already. It's, it's been established since nineteen seventy. I want to say it was nineteen seventy four that uh, the Alameda Karate School Dojo w- had opened. So it's been. Uh, it was a well known dojo over there. Um. Um. Um, man, I'm forgetting the name of the very famous jujitsu master that was actually teaching people in that same island in in, in Alameda. Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm gonna have to bring. I'm gonna have to bring it up, or uh, but he was a uh, machado. Uh, was it a machado? Uh, no, 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 no. Very Cole old man. Speed. Very very old man. I, when I find it and I go on your show, I'm gonna yeah. tell you about it. But okay, um, sure. during that time as a junior. I would go to high school. I dress very simple. Um, I mean, I, I always wore silver and black, obviously Raiders, but it's also martial arts colors, which most people don't really realize. Silver and black is very martial arts colors, right? Stay yes. humble. You don't have to brag about what you can do to someone. Correct. Right? Correct. Um, so in high school, this freshman, like he bumps into me and you know how it is, right? They, they, he was much bigger and he was like, Hey man, you better watch yourself or whatever. And he was trying to challenge me. And I just said, Oh, I apologize. I'm, you know, I'm very sorry. And I moved on, went to geometry or whatever my class was. At the time. <laughs> and uh, he didn't know that some of the freshmen and sophomores that were going to that same high school were my martial arts students. Wow. And he had no idea that like in the mornings, and you know this, when you go to your dojo, you bow to each other. Absolutely. That's just the way it is, man. That ain't, absolutely. that's not weird. Bow on the mat, so, bow to each other. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so back in 1991 to 1994 in high school, you know, you had a high schooler bowing to other high schoolers and there, and some people are. So if you're in that little small island, like where you lived in Windsor, Connecticut, in Alameda, everybody already knew. Oh, right. that's Mr. Reyes. Um, you know, he's one of the teachers over there at the dojo at Park Street, right? Right, right. So anyways, uh, lunchtime comes along. This kid, man, he like finds me. And then he's like, <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, you know, because basically some of you the learned. people started telling him. Hey man, you do not want that. Like I'm telling you, he's super nice, but if it don't, don't do it. Just don't do nothing. Like right. I would very suggest because they see it on the mat weekly, and that's what you would say. Right. 
right? No, absolutely. So, You're absolutely right. Yeah. So that mentality, and I think it's that mentality that if you take someone like an Amir Abdullah and then he's in your team, he's got leadership skills. He's got kind of a Zen, humble quality about him. So he's not going to care how much he's getting paid. He oh. just wants to play and play hard for the team. And these yep. are these pieces that you need, like how you were the captain, right? These are the pieces you need with the Raider organization. And a lot of times everybody looks at it and you know this turf because you have to deal with some of these youngsters that will argue with you about, oh, yeah. you know, well, I want this guy and I want to trade six picks. To go get Jane Daniels when <laughs> if you're a martial artist like us, we're like uh patience, man. Like patience. And by the way, Aiden O'Connell wasn't terrible either. So I wanna oh. I wanna I wanna switch to that because I know you yes. I've listened to your shows and you have vehemently defended Aiden O'Connell, like that's your dude, right? And He's I agree guy. with you, and I'm one of the people that literally, man, when I went on Protect the Shield on a Chris Kimber show. People were like, man, you're crazy. Of course, we need to trade up to go get Jaden Daniels. That's Antonio Pierce's guy. And I'd be like, this is just not fair, man. If this was, if this was in any other level, you know, you you basically threw O'Connell into the fire, asked them to be the quarterback, which is the leader of the group. You asked them to be the quarterback in that shit show scenario essentially i'm sorry to curse <laughs> oh, yes. you, but yes. where right. is mcdaniel right. starting him is he not oh no let me go ahead and start you in san diego or in, uh, in la against the chargers oh well you threw an interception but it was mcdaniel's fault you called a dumb play like you give the ball to to josh jacobs right there you Correct. don't even throw the ball but anyway i don't want to use this time to complain about that <laughs> right? Yes, yes right but then when he finally gets a coach to believe in him and say, doesn't matter what happens, you're our guy. Doesn't matter what happens. We're going to ride you out. That's what I wanted them to do in the San Diego game throughout. I wanted them to start from game, that game, all the way and finish out. Because no matter what would have happened, I at least would have known, are we drafting a quarterback or are we sticking with this kid? Right. Correct. So Correct. all I can do and all I can do for you guys, because, again, I am not a high level football player like Mr. Terrence Crump was. <laughs> what I am, though, is smart enough to do research and research proves that Aiden O'Connell won five games and only lost four. If we're being real, if we're being real, when AP As asked him, to, to, yeah, uh, when, and when AP asked, handed him the reins, everybody always points to the. Oh, well, did you see he wasn't mobile? He didn't do crap in the Vikings game. He couldn't even score a point. Yeah, but then mentally, four days later, the guy scored four touchdowns and threw for almost 400 yards. I if you're ball. talking to another college player like a Terrence Crump, who is the best running back in the entire United States for junior college in 1994, right. and I asked him, hey, man, your quarterback's so mentally tough that it didn't even bother him that he scored zero four didn't days earlier. Play. And then four days later, he threw for almost 400 yards and um, scored four touchdowns. Like, you want that guy to be your quarterback? 100%. All I have to ask anybody is, have you ever had a bad day? Did you go to work and suck, mess something up? Everybody has bad days. This guy, this kid, came in as a rookie with one of, if not, the worst head coaches that will go down in football history. Football history. Josh McDaniels will go down as by far one of the worst head coaches in all of football. And we all know he suffocates his players. He forces them to do things his way, the highway, or you're out of the door. We we all heard the, the, the talk, the chatter. Oh, it feels like we're walking on eggshells. It's not fun. That's what that is. This is what this kid is operating in. To then have that coach outed and halfway through the season, right? Halfway through the season, the kids, the, the coach is out. So now he's dealing with a complete defensive-minded team. Everybody and their mother knows Josh McDaniels was the head to the offense, period. It was his scheme, his system. Is everything, and that's why it sucked. 
because everything had to be his way. He didn't want to mold anything. He didn't want to use what he had, tweak his. No, it's we're going to just suffer through the fact that we got to play through it until we get the pieces that we need. This is what Hayden O'Connell had to deal with. You can guarantee he was told you better not try to run, stay in the pocket. Right. All of these things are being taught and told to him and ingrained in his head for the first eight games of the season. Now that guy's gone. Your, your quarterback coach becomes the offensive coordinator. I don't know if his play calling was any better. I don't think he helped him out all that much. And you know what I'm saying? You got people that just aren't up to par yet because you got other rookies. There's just a lot that went on with this kid in his rookie season, and he got better every single game. But the most important part of this, you tell me any of I'm talking the, the Peyton Manning's. Find me another rookie that didn't turn the ball over like him when it mattered and when it counted towards the end of the season, when they were making a run to try to make the playoffs. You won't find it because rookies make mistakes all the time. Aiden figured it out. He figured it out early. He had that first horrible game and figured it out. Like you said, AP told him, we sticking with you, boss. You are God. You know, we're not going back and forth. No, you are our guy. We believe in you. And that man took that and ran with it, man. And I can assure you, this man is not giving up his spot easy this year. I, if if Minshew wins, it's because that's Minshew's good. a baller. Exactly. Then that's good. It's because it's, it's, he's it's, a and that's the whole point is I feel like the youngsters now or the younger fans, and I believe me, guys, I understand. I started watching the Raiders, uh, you know, in the Philippines that we don't talk about the NFL. So I didn't even understand what that was until 1986, right? But what got me into it is when a guy by the name of Bo Jackson started <laughs> playing for the Raiders. And then uh, I, as a child, uh, you know, having a Nintendo and Tech Mobile comes out and you're like, not this guy's not only amazing on the field and on tape, he's amazing on the game. He's a right. cheat code. And, you know, then you never look back. And of course, living in Alameda, California, which is basically you're walking distance to the stadium. It's easy to be a, a Raider fan, but. You know, people like they don't. Sometimes when I'm bringing up facts, they get mad, right? So, <laughs> yeah, uh, facts, here, here's just some facts about Aiden O'Connell, and I don't want to waste too much of my time with Terrence Kemp Turf, uh, the ultimate, the ultimate Raider fan, 32 on YouTube. Please subscribe, everybody. Please keep pressing those subscribe buttons. Thank uh, you. I, you know, I want to shout out the chats too. You guys have been amazing. I'm so sorry. I've, I've been putting your names up. I see everybody, uh, every, you know, GA, I, I promise I'm going to get to it. I'm having such a great time with Mr. Crump here that I, you know, I just, you know, I, I want to make sure, but one funny one that cool Kev 75 did say is I come off the bench at the deli when my bacon, egg and cheese sandwich is ready. Uh, <laughs> LOL. So that's, that's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. But, but speaking of coming off the bench, what I was saying about yeah. the youngsters now is, they look at the negative rather than the positive. If right. Gardner Minshew is to beat out a O'Connell, then you have to respect that Antonio Pierce, along with Tom Coughlin, Marvin Lewis, Joe Philbin, like this all-star cast of coaches, had to have approved it, which then means not only do we have sure. a great backup in Aiden O'Connell, but we have an awesome starter in Gardner Minshew. Legit. Okay, now I'm a firm believer that Aiden O'Connell, based on the tapes, and the stats from Purdue, in where he is essentially the second, the second greatest quarterback to ever come out of that program, other than Drew Brees, Hall Correct. of Famer. Correct. For all of you guys who keep hating on Aiden O'Connell, even the ones who sit there and go, well, he's just not mobile enough. Then go watch the game against Michigan when Michigan was Michigan State was 8-0 and watch how he, he surprised people coming out of the pocket. Go watch how he beat Ohio State. Go watch how he threw for over 500 yards. Go watch some of these highlights because in 2021, if you if you agree with me, please let me know, Turf. In 2021, yeah. 2021 draft comes out, right. and the quarterbacks that go off the board is Trevor Lawrence, um, Zach Wilson, uh, Trey Lance, um, Justin Fields. Yep. I'm thinking of everybody that made it in uh, top 15. And I apologize. My memory is a little shoddy. 
Mac Jones, I think, went number yep. 15 uh, yep. uh, I, 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 with the Patriots. Other than Trevor Lawrence, all those quarterbacks are already with different teams. And Mac Jones play. is already the backup to Trevor Lawrence now, right? Correct. Okay. No and then you got like <laughs> Sam Darnold, who was the second overall pick. You got right. Baker Mayfield, who's the first overall pick, is just now getting paid again because right. now they're seeing it. Like Jared yes. Goff, who took Detroit almost to the Super Bowl, was a first round overall pick, but it took this long for him to really make it all the way through. You got to give these people time, right? Got to give Correct. them time to learn. You got it would be like trying to throw a rundown into a jujitsu mat. And right. then being like, hey, man, I need you to go submit that guy. <laughs> exactly. It's like, whoa, can you teach him? I don't know how to hey, fall man. first. How about how you fall first? Now let's learn how to use the hips on the mat. All right. Okay. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? Yeah. So, 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 Turf, when I say it, I don't, I don't mean it to belittle the youngsters, but I'm like, what generation did you guys live in? Because in our generation, someone like Terrence Crump had to work hard. It to get to these levels time. and get and get some and, and get a, a team like the Montana State Bobcats to go, we're gonna give you a full ride to college, man. Right. To go get an education, just play, just play as not the running back, one of our good running backs. Because right. we also had <laughs> Tyler, we also have Kinnaman, we yeah. also have you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, like it, it's about a team, it's about syncing with a team, be happy with the pieces that you have right. in this team. So now we're going to – now I, I want to stick a little longer in this quarterback because I want to know yeah, this sure. from your eyes, Absolutely. knowing how to be mobile from the backfield. and But also having that captain mentality where when you're looking downfield, you can see what the defense is about to do. Correct. We do have Anthony Brown Jr., who was pretty good in Boston College, yes. um, was pretty good in Oregon for that year too. And then when the Ravens took him and Lamar Jackson went down, there's some solid tape on this kid on how he could be good. So we got Gardner Minshew, Anthony Brown Jr. in that reserves contract. And right. then we also have Aiden O'Connell. Why is everybody still thinking we need to, we, we need not, right. it'll be nice for us to get a quarterback. Right. Oh, no, no. Oh, every, you know, the sky is falling, falling turf chicken little. Right. Yes. Can you guys yes. speak to that? Because you've been saying it for months now about I, everyone calm down. That's not our biggest need. Quarterback not. is not our biggest need. So go ahead, sir. It's go not. Ahead. And I agree, man, because the bottom line is what bothers me more than anything on the planet right now is everyone just immediately assumes that one of these quarterbacks every year is going to turn out to be Patrick Mahomes. And that's how you can beat Patrick. You're never going to beat Patrick Mahomes by outdueling him. You are going to have to have a top five defense and a decent offense that can keep that man on the sideline. That's the way you beat a Patrick Mahomes. You're not going to beat him by going to find somebody better than him. You know why? Because that's just not going to happen anytime soon. I get it. We all just saw the GOAT, right? Tom Brady, bask off in retirement, and now here it is. We're talking about Mahomes. This is a very rare thing. Just no different than... C.J. Stroud having the, you know, uh, rookie season he had and making it to the playoffs. And these things don't happen, ladies and gentlemen. It's just not reality. And when you're talking about a sport or anything that takes the amount of time and effort and, and ability to be disciplined, you're just not going to just jump that. And, and, you know, with the Internet, with technology, you know, and the instant gratification this day and age on how things work, I, I, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but when it comes to sport, I, the, the only thing technology is going to do is help you train smarter. But the whole effort and, you know, putting in the work and when one person's doing 10 reps, you better do 12. I, that is not going away. And there's no substitute for that. There's no pill for that. There's no we can just go draft somebody for that. No. These things have to happen organically somewhat. And, and there has to be a true gelling and a true uh, camaraderie me amongst these, these teams. And I'm talking from the janitor up to the owner. It can't be a, you know, a one-off thing. Everybody did their part when they won a Super Bowl. And I literally mean the janitor to the owner. 
everybody, whether it was the janitor that I made sure that the uh, whiteboards were clean or, you know, he just did extra time on the floor, whatever it is, everybody was lock and step to win that chip. There's no other way around it. Period. I don't, nobody just naturally, oh, we just by, just by chance, we just won a chip. No, it doesn't work that way, ladies and gentlemen. And, and I don't know any other way to put it. I want to put this out there for you, Turf. GA Patriot, you're so amazing. So you're at 998. If you are just tuning in right now, <laughs> listening to the great Terrence Crump here on the Captain Jack Rackham channel. Um, yeah. this is again, this is Captain Jack show. This is not Raider Transplant Show. Right. Raider Transplant probably won't even have his own channel till 2025 because transplant doctors <laughs> tell me to you know keep Chill getting out. uh cal calming down, but Guys, please subscribe to the <laughs> Ultimate Raider Fan 32. I want to see our guy Turf hit that thousand. He's been working hard. He's he's trying to give you guys the knowledge that I, I mean I am so if you I, I know some of you guys are probably jumping in and thank you so much for for taking your time to listen to us tonight. You're jumping in from some of the great shows like uh the Raider Syndicate and Protect the Shit. I don't even know who's out there right now because I've been having <laughs> such a great time with 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 turf i don't know if like graph is doing a show or if Wasted right. doing a show, but if you're listening to this thank you so much we appreciate it and if Absolutely. you didn't listen to the first hour man I, I i was really working hard to get to get terrence crump to to give me a little tear give me a little tear <laughs> on some of these things that i was bringing up yeah, you got a lot i just didn't show it i i dude i can't I'm you know, for you. ladies and gentlemen he didn't think i knew about uh, he didn't think geez. I knew and why I, you know, this guy's been talking the last couple of days about how honored he is to be on, on this show. I'm honored that he came in. This is one, this, and, is, this guy was the best. When I was in high school as a senior, <laughs> Terrence Crump was the best running back in the entire junior college football in the entire nation. Just that alone is a, quite an accomplishment as I, I if you guys, Listen to last week's show when I was talking about Rundown and Joshua Johnson. And if you look him up on Max Prep and how great he did in high school. But the levels that you got in the swing games that I watched on those on those Montana State television uh, uh, tapes, you know, Montana State versus Montana, Montana State <laughs> versus Eastern Washington University. Like, there is, man, you know, the, the, the crump dump was a thing. Crump people. dump, baby. The Crump Dump, baby. So, so if you haven't listened to it, you're gonna have to rewatch it. It's worth it's worth watching. Please subscribe to the <laughs> Ultimate Raider Fan 32. Please, I want to see him get to a thousand before we finish this show. So I got I got about another hour with with with, with my guy uh, Turf. And again, Turf, thank yes, you sir. so much. No, for all thank the you, man. Thank, thank you. For being you. So open. I, I I I knew I was gonna get you on some of these things too. You did. I, you have no idea. I'm, a, I'm, I'm not. You know, I'm, I'm focused on you. Again, sorry, chat, chat lives. Y'all know y'all matter, man. But this guy to me is like a god. I don't think y'all understand. If you actually do martial arts, uh, boxing, if you've ever even tried, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This man is a legend. I, all right, I stop. Wish man. I, I wish I could be half. No, of no, this they know how to Google shit. Like, I'm stop. Sure. stop. No, I'm, I'm just not, telling you know, y'all, like, man. I, I, this is amazing to me. This is am I man. I I linked up all of my BJJ guys, Muay Thai guys. Hopefully, they got it in time. I I let everybody know about this. I know they'll be rewatching it because you know we haven't even gotten into it yet, man. Because no, and I and I promise yeah. you again, I you know I want to know your football expertise so, right, so importantly right. because again I think the reason I I keep pushing everyone to please subscribe to the Ultimate Raider Fan Thirty Two channel because this guy Terrence Crump is not a talking head. He knows what he's talking about. He played at a high level. He understands. Like you want to ask about running backs. You want to ask about how defense is, is being run. You want to ask about how plays is being done. You want to ask about what kind of linemen we should have. Right. This is the guy that used to run behind him. This yeah. is the guy. Was, uh, he, right. he was in a room full he's of right. amazing running backs. I'm not going to say I'm always right, man, but I do think my opinion uh, should be a tad bit valued uh, for sure. I, that I'll admit. You know, I'm, I'm definitely humble, obviously, as you know, um, but I will admit that. You know, what I'm saying comes from the heart. I'm not just giving you 
some old mumbo jumbo, like he says, talking points because I seen some other running back do it. No, I lived it. This was my entire life up until 21 years old where it got shut down because my last game was just over. Turf, uh, Turf, is there a way for us to check? Because GA Patriots says we're one step what? away. We're what? one step away, people, from Turf what? pumping a champagne want? bottle in front of all of us. Yo. Let me see. Let me see. Hold on. Oh! We there? Oh! Are we there? Congratulations we there? to the ultimate Raider fan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he did it. Yeah. Here we go, everybody. Oh, here's this the is bottle. In the making on the Captain Jack <laughs> Rapping channel. I know that the, the Shield Dude, Squad tried amazing. to do it at the Raider Syndicate show. This is I know amazing. Chris was helping at the Protect the Shield podcast. Oh, yeah. I know Everybody. Rundown was helping at the Raider Rundown. Everybody's podcast. been helping, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Raider Nation Jason was trying to do it. But I yep. got to tell you that the reward, the reward <laughs> of seeing our guy, Terrence Crump, Terrence, yeah. yes, hitting the 1,000 mark. Hitting the one right day. here with Raider Transplant, I, everybody. I wouldn't have Raider wanted to do it any other day, any other way, man. No other way would I have wanted to do this. Wow. <laughs> Here we go. The bottle's getting popped. We popping bottles tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Popping bottles. Popping bottles. I feel like this is like the 90s in the club. <laughs> Y'all ready? I'm going to get it over. The, I'm going to get a little all over the place. Oh! Oh! Yeah. Oh, oh man. I wish it just could pour it on my head right now. It is. Let me get my goggles turned. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you to all the people Thank in the show. Thank, Thank you to you. Shield Squad. Thank you to TRS. Thank you to Thank everyone you, who paid attention to the Captain Jack Rackham This is channel. amazing. I, I promise you guys all, if it's you're amazing. a Captain Jack fan, you're going to love Turf. You're going to love. It's amazing. Not only is he old school, not only is this guy, he's been a Raider Nation guy since the 70s. This is why I wore the... Super Bowl 11 shirt today, right? The Amish shirt. I wore the wow. uh, the Super Bowl 15 hat. I did it all for turf tonight. Uh, you guys know I usually wear my transplant strong shirts or my I wear green because of organ donation shirts. But tonight, man, I have to make it special. I'm such this a fan a of, this, of, of, this, of this man. So thank you. It's thank amazing. you so much to everybody. Wow. That turf. This is huge. Tell us how you're feeling about hitting the top. I, I, honestly, I, I feel like I, I got drafted. <laughs> I don't think y'all understand this. I, I I don't even know how to explain. I really do feel amazing. I, I this might sound str I don't know. I I, I this is crazy. I, it's a goal, right? I you know I I've been wanting to get to you know just for my own personal reasons, right? Just to say you know, hey, I've accomplished something. Uh, you know, it reminds me of going down that path. I mean. I, I don't know if we can get into it, man, but I, I just got to let you know, man, I've been doing a lot of things differently as I've gotten older. Uh, this is a story I really want to tell for everyone. Um, because as you get older, you, you you start to realize, you start getting tired. The redundancy, right? Get tired of playing flag football, right? Because you can't play the regular football, basketball, right? Going to the gym all the time. You get tired of it. And, and at some point, something's got to give so it, there's no better time for me to bring this up because not only is this youtube journey the same way for me but the way i got into martial arts was exactly that i was tired of doing all the same things i, I was tired of you know picking the stuff i was good at picking the stuff i thought i was good at doing the things i knew i would be pretty solid right you know, I said to myself, for once in your life, man, literally, really challenge yourself. Challenge your mind, your body, your soul. Do something completely out of character, out of ordinary. And the facts of the matter is that's rolling around on the ground with a bunch of sweaty, nasty dudes in the ones. <laughs> you know, and I have no problem with the people that, you know, may look at things like that. But look, I got a wife, three kids. It was never my thing. I actually started jujitsu because of Muay Thai. Um, 
And obviously, you guys know Mr. Reyes here is he could teach Muay Thai in his sleep. But All right, stop, man, that- stop. This is you're the star of this show. <laughs> Look, you're the star. Okay. All right, guys. Like, tell. Please tell Mr. Crump here to stop. <laughs> He's my guest. He's the star of this show. I, I'll go on the Ultimate Raider. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. 32 yes. And, we uh, are. And, and we'll talk, we we'll talk to martial arts if people want to listen to it. I know that, yes. the uh, you know, thank you to all of you who are new. Uh, Leo, shout out to Cheeto Linus. Leo, thank you for the birthday Cheeto gift. The I really man. appreciate it. Uh, kind words, kind messages. And, man, you sent me that awesome AP shirt that I know you should have the credit for and you made. I just want to warn you, brother. I just want to warn you something, right? I remember uh, there was a group, really cool group of, of people doing kind of like what Leo was doing back in uh, 2000. And I want to say 2009, I think is when mm-hmm. they were doing it. And they came up with this Pacquiao shirt, right? But it wasn't Pacquiao's face. It was just an imagery of his hair, okay? It was just an imagery of his hair and like the like how his face looked so yeah you yeah. knew it was Pacquiao even right. though it wasn't they didn't say Pacquiao it, it was just a straight shirt a uh, couple of Freddy's champions were wearing it Manny yeah. even liked it <laughs> but Manny got agents and those agents man slapped them with a cease and desist letter oh wow bastard, and you did so I hope a piece not like that you know because <laughs> technically if I was your lawyer, Leo, you're not doing nothing wrong. Honestly, right. man, you're not right. doing nothing wrong. Right. Um, but, you know, if this gets too successful, just, <laughs> just be ready, brother. <laughs> be ready, Leo. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, sir. So, That's you know, shout out to everybody, man. Shout out to Shane sure, Shout out to uh, TR Thank you, Station, man. Thank you, you chat. Thank you, chat. I, this is amazing. You, you really don't understand how much y'all made my my week man it's you know it's it's been a rough patch for your boy it honestly has i'm not trying to go into i i'm i'm i don't push my proud right you know what i mean no of course not honestly you're a martial artist you and you internalize it you know right and then and then you know you 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 get the opportunity to take it out on the mat if you need to right (laughs) and and, 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 you know and 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 have fun that way right exactly Um, and and again for a lot of you guys who are listening uh you know what makes it so fun for me and, and 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 Terrence Crump here, Turf, as you guys all know him, is yeah. that that martial arts background that he has, and then me having the background that I have to share an actual two hour program. Where believe me, I've been holding back on a lot of the martial <laughs> arts that. things that I want to say, just because <laughs> it's about it's about Terrence Crump, man. Y'all y'all need to look up some of these people sometimes, and, hey. and just know that you know, like I like listening to. You know, like Rich Eisen is entertaining to me, and I've been listening to him since uh, forever, since I was I like to, to sports. But right. Rich Eisen didn't play the game the way a Terrence Crump played the game. So when I want to ask about Aiden O'Connell, because mm-hmm. Terrence Crump did have a quarterback by the name of Rob Thompson, who, if maybe things were different, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I feel like the fact, again, that Aiden O'Connell's mentality is there, right? As a yes. quarterback, that that's why I I I'm rocking him. I'm rocking with him. I'm not trying to replace that guy. I think if you are a person who works hard at your craft or your art or your passion, just ask yourself how you would feel if you sacrifice what you need to sacrifice to try to help the team, and then they just kick you to the curb right. because there's a shiny new toy that hasn't even proven himself yet. When yep. you and again, all I can speak to are facts. Ain't right. O'Connell. Greatest Purdue receiver, second only to Drew Brees. I mean, uh, greatest Purdue quarterback, second. Hey, and and for the record, I don't know if people know this, but he actually has a record that is better than our guy Brees, which is the accuracy record. Yes, absolutely. And that's why we like him. You and me, Turf, that's why we like him. You know, like, stop blaming him for the mobility part and start watching the 2021 tapes so you can see he actually is pretty mobile. He's yes. not a running quarterback. I'm, we're not trying to tell you that. No. But he knows how to get out of the pocket enough to exactly. throw the ball, which, exactly. by the way, is what a quarterback's job is. Steve Young was really good coming out of BYU, but the reason he got better is when he sat down and watched how Joe Montana threw the ball, he understood, oh, I could be a lot better 
if I become an effective passer right. and then I use my running ability as an extra versus and, now everybody's looking for that sexy, like turf, right. you played running back. You didn't throw the ball. <laughs> right. 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 So if you want a quarterback, did you want Rob Compson to throw to, uh, to throw the ball or did you want Rob Compson to run the ball? I wanted him to throw the ball. <laughs> exactly right. And, and I got to reiterate this. I can assure you guys that this kid was being told if he even came remotely close to running out of the pocket, his job is gone. So you couple that with everything else, and now he's a starter and that dude is gone, and he's still dealing with the speed of the game? Do you really think he's going to look like he has the ability to escape anything? Absolutely not. But if you watch the tape, like I say, that first game, it was atrocious. We all know about it. The fumbles, the, the, the intercept, it was horrible. But guess what? That next game, you saw a certain play where ah, it wasn't a turnover. He actually just took a sack for once, didn't fumble, didn't throw it away, right? And then you get to another play, and it's like he actually took a step, you know, and got rid of the ball, almost, you know, picked off, almost a fumble. The progression moved, and you're talking about moving in chaos. It's not like it was roses. And this is what the kid did. You just got to give him a chance. That's all I'm saying. And if somebody beats him out, especially Turf, a partner Minshew, yeah. Turf, you, you are so inspiring today. And again, for all of you who are just now watching the Captain Jack Rackham channel, here on his network, whether it's Roku or Twitch or Twitter or, you know, Captain Jack's everywhere and everybody yeah. in the Raider Nation loves him and knows him, right? It's very rare. It's very rare for this man because he lives in Tampa or he lives in Florida. I'm sorry, in the state of Florida because mm. it's so late for him to <laughs> pop in on a Sunday night. Wow. But I think he just wanted to come in. Ah. Salute. A new shipmate. Captain hey. Jack, are you here? Captain Jack. Hey, uh, gentlemen. Wow. You know, I use I use that term with both of you. I mean, it's it's deserved for for both of my friends here. Thank and, you. And uh, I just I just wanted to, to pop in quickly. Uh, I, I I did put out my post that I've been talking about it. That uh, you know I'm going to be going on a road trip in the early part of April. I, I put it out on all my Facebook pages and. Uh, to, even on IG, but I did want to stop in and not, not to ruin. Oh my God. No, not to ruin the <laughs> conversation tonight because I was told in no uncertain terms that I wouldn't understand it because I'm not a boxing fan. <laughs> I didn't say that. Chap. <laughs> Everybody rewatch the show from Thursday, please. You, uh, all you gotta do is click in on the Thursday night show where Captain Jack face. Had Check Power Raider on and Hollywood Check Raider on and IE Raider in. And Check the tape. Cam Jack's yeah. just messing with me, guys. Yeah. Check the tape. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it was it was implied. It, it wasn't blatant, but it, it was implied. But but I tell you what, Ultimate Raider fan ship made it, it. It's I am so happy that you had a chance to come in and hang out with the Raider transplant and talk talking things. You know, like I said, because. This is a, a audience. It's all the folks that love sports and love all portions of sports and boxing, and and, and the way. And trust me, I love the the true the true science, and it is the true science. Mm -hmm. I think it's called the sweet science. Is it? It is. It is correct. It's it's why I love. It. See, I'm not as stupid as people make me out to be. <laughs> <Come> on, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, uh, I wouldn't know anything about boxing, so just stay the fuck off with the Sunday show. You know, I, I'm, you know, I, I just, but I, I did, I did want to say, no, I, truly, truly, um, I wanted to thank you for for popping in and giving your insights. Uh, I would be lying if I said I've been monitoring because I have not been. I just been, I just put the the post out, but I, I said, my God, it's already almost ten thirty. And I want to say hi to my shipmates. And you guys are the, the, the two most important shipmates because you're running the show. And people are here to hear and see you in all your glory. And now, granted, you notice I don't have the cam on because, trust me, guys, you don't want to look at me. I don't have a shirt on. I got my – I got, I got, my, I got, 
I got my man boob showing. You guys still want to see Jack, that. Stop, stop. Stop I'm teasing serious. the lady. I'm saying, Stop. No, 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 no. If if I was if I was put together rather well, I would I would say, yo, yo, check this out. But no, I, I I'm flabby and I, I'm looking like uh, you, you know the orangutan that was in the uh, every which way but loose movie with the man. But I kind of look like that without the red hair. That's funny. Okay. That's funny. So, hey, Kev, Jack, before you leave, a couple of things. I, I don't know. Again, um, if you get to re listen to this it's it was it's such an amazing thing i almost got turf to to get to, to to tear up a little bit i almost got oh him. and i, I ruined almost it. got him but, i ruined um, it oh yeah. man turf no, you didn't yeah. ruin it because Cap Jack it, it, was with me when we had a very emotional show right, and there was not we a dry eye in the room yes, with we were. me Stu, chris yeah. he's a big softy too that big teddy bear yes the Shield podcast. <laughs> he's and, a loving guy and, man and, yes. and, and Cap jack but but Captain Jack, tonight we celebrated on your channel, sir, on the Captain Jack Rackham Show. We yes, did it sir. here on the ship. Turf at the Ultimate Raider, uh, at the Ultimate Raider Fan 32 hit a thousand subscribers. Thousand tonight. The Outstanding. Well, well, Mazel Tov. And, Thank and you. Ma Mazel Tov is, is a nice Jewish way of saying congratulations. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, know, you so much. Mazel. And, and you know, I, and uh, in this world nowadays, like I said, I am of all of all religions. You know, I am Judeo Christian, and I, I love my Islamic brothers. I love my Hindu brothers. I love my Shinto brothers. I love everybody, and I don't really there care is. what your religion is, what your what what your sex is, what your orientation is what your color is, as long as people can love each other and respect each other above all. That's what is most important. So again, to Cheers you, sir, that. congratulations on the, on the grand baby. Hey, that means that you can get, you can get monetized, baby. 1,000 <laughs> monetized. Uh, yes, sir. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and, and anytime that you have anything that I can do, because I just put out that I will be having my shows on the road, which will be an adventure because I'll have to plan my trips as to shit. Where, where the hell is the, the Wi-Fi at certain <laughs> times as I cross the country? <laughs> right. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make it happen. And if I don't make it happen, then I'm either going to run a rerun or I'm going to say, yo, Angelo. Or Bishop, what what, what y'all doing tonight? You know, and they'll say <laughs> they'll say screw you, man. I got plans. But the thing is, is I I, I want y'all to know that uh, thank you for being here and sharing your time. I I know that I'm long winded, not as long winded as Angelo is, but I'm long winded, and and I want to I just want to say thank you, sir, for your time. Congratulations on your success. Thanks. We're going to get Angelo his channel when he's ready. When he's ready for it, he's not quite ready yet. Right. But when right. he's transplant ready for doctors, it, I, I'm going to need to show you a transplant doctor note. <laughs> well, well, yeah, there you go. Yeah, and and, and uh, ultimate. I, I I don't know if you're in on this joke, but I've already got my nickname for for Angelo. I'm Tracy, uh -oh. and oh. that's Bart. That's <laughs> Bart. Because 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 Tracy Ullman spawned the Simpsons. And since wow. he was on my channel doing his thing, when he's big and successful, <laughs> they're going to say, well, where'd he come from? Where'd he come from? He came from the Captain Jack channel. Yes. So it's like, I'm Tracy Ullman in this equation. And that <laughs> is oh, it's Bart and Homer over on the other side, man. I hear you because uh, he opens up another channel for MMA. And by, I, more, he's through the roof. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I was telling Captain Jack, that, back then, yeah. and, and Captain Jack, I think you can attest to this too, that I, I believe, and I hope so, that a lot of your fans, your viewers, the black hole, um, everybody from Violator to Power Raider, I hope they've enjoyed the time that I've, I've uh, steered the ship for a little bit while you, you needed to do what you needed to do. Arr, um, man to helm, you bastard. Get that shit right. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I really do hope that you guys enjoyed it. And I'm, I'm saying my goodbye on uh, March 31st in where my special guest is going to be Chris Kimber of the Protect Shield podcast, along with Stuart Schwaggart. And if I could uh -huh. somehow get Captain to show up too, yeah. I promise it will not I, be a five-hour show. I, I'm going to keep might. it. I might be allowed in on my own show. Isn't that amazing? Okay. I, might be I hope you in. know, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, but like, uh, uh, you know, I, I was saying that prior to my transplant, when I was, uh, when I was in the professional fight sports world, 
I had a television show that did boxing and MMA, and 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 um, it was it's it was a very fun thing. Like you, but like you were saying, Captain Jack. But what you guys do, what you do, Captain Jack, what uh, uh, Turf does at the Ultimate Raider Fan uh, Thirty Two, what all of these, uh, you know, someone like Chris Kimber, Protect the Shield, or you know, um, you know, even the Raider Syndicate and the Raider Rundowns coming up, Papa Rundowns coming. Right. All of this, it takes time. It, it's like it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of energy. It's not just, you know, Captain Jack just doesn't show up in the channel and start talking. That's not, <laughs> that you know, that's not how it is. Like, Captain Jack actually puts a lot of effort in planning the show, and, and he has his certain yes. audience that watches it. Um, so that's the same thing that I was talking about tonight, that people that should want to listen to Turf should know that he played, yes. you know, running yeah. back at that high level. So he knows what he's talking about. And I'm not just listening to another reporter who's coming out of college who read some stats. I'm talking to someone who actually hurt his knees, hurt his ankle, played the game, bled with teammates, cried with teammates. Um, so, so yeah. So, you know, Cap, when I, you know, I'm honored, sir, that when the black hole is ready to receive me and a Raider transplant show can happen, it, it most likely Cap, to be honest with you, um, probably will not be all Raider content. I think I'm going to probably talk a lot, a lot of Raider content, but a lot of what transplant life is like. Because yeah. I don't think there's enough re representation of people truly understanding that even though I look like this, the way I feel inside, guys, it's like a house of cards, man. Anything can go wrong at any given time, which is why I always count my blessings. And I think having uh, uh, great people and great friends like yourself, uh, Cam Jack, Jay. Levy, for any of you who don't know who he is. But... I don't know who that bastard is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, to, to, to have an amazing person like Turf come on our show, you know, come on your show for, you know, two hours of his time. And this guy's been doing shows since this morning. He guessed it on, like, a couple of shows already. And for him to do that is, is, is you know, thank Bless you. Me, man. Thank you. This is what I was excited for. I, and, don't get me wrong. Jason, my guy Jason is dope. I, he's another very cerebral guy man and i love the way he puts on the shows but i i gotta be honest and he knows i right you you're a legend man you're, you're a legend to me i, I you kidding me reyes i man please <laughs> well i tell you i tell you shit, man, you can you can come on you could come on anytime you i have an open invitation and that's why people that. that's why people said well, well why don't you invite me on and I said, dude, I, I have an open invitation for everybody. And I think maybe awesome. maybe they they like want the personal. And I, I really honestly, I it, it's not that I, I don't want to. It's just I just don't have the time to say, well, sometimes I say, well, I will have this person on on this day. I will. And, and it's it's rare, but I will do that. But it's like I have a standing invitation for anybody to come on at any time and just speak what they want to speak about. That's why I said it, it's your five minutes. Well, obviously, if you're what, you're co-hosting, co you better be, bring me more than five minutes. Dan, <laughs> but uh, if, if you're coming into the show, it's your dime, man. It's your five minutes, maybe 10 if, if you're if you're going to be doing something great. And, and I want it to be everybody. And, yes, this is a Raider-centric show, right. but it's not Raider-only show. And oh. it's sports, it's life, it's movie. It, it, the only thing I don't like to talk about is politics and religion. <laughs> Boom! Because I, that, that, that's how you fuck up a Thanksgiving dinner, right there. You know, <laughs> right, you know exactly right. Exactly yeah, you, right. You bring, you bring politics and religion in there. You're you're gone. Now you could talk about the fights at Thanksgiving from remember that fight five years ago when that bitch threw that shit at me? Man, that was bad. And then you go from there, and then and it's 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 wonderful because you can talk about really cool shit, but just right. po politics, religion, you're gonna lose half your audience one way or the other. And right. and Captain yeah. Jack, speaking of uh, you know, next guest, uh, you saw the email already, so we should be hopefully having. Cool. On Thursday night, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern yeah. time, March yeah. 28th, Thursday night. Special guest is Power Raider, wow. Hollywood Raider, wow. Inland wow. Empire, IE Raider. There you go. Captain Jack. So Angelo won't be if, if if we can do that, guys. All Angelo is going to be doing is manning the calm. As yeah, you're full of shit. Yeah, we can do that. You're full of shit. We, we, we tried to do that when when uh, when Chris had us on, 
and he had Chris and Angelo and then Stuart Schwaggert and me, right? Mm -hmm. And and I barely got any talking time in. And Chris and Chris was like, Well, shit, why am I here other than just to be on camera? You know, <laughs> this was fun. And people are like saying, like, well, Cap, you talk a lot. I said, dude, I couldn't get a word in edgewise because between Angelo and Stuart. It was on for five and a half <laughs> fucking hours. Okay. Now, now cap, cap to be it was fair. Great. It was entertaining. It was entertaining. But seriously, I was, and again, I love that. Angelo can do it. It's like when you do a show with, with Phil Villapiano. Just put the mic on and let him talk. And he'll 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 carry your show for two hours. Trust me, he will. <laughs> now, now, Cap, Cap, come on. To be fair. I, 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 during that show, Cap, I was Chris's special guest. Yes, she and was. we were we were showing pictures of me at the hospital. Yes, she we did. were showing pictures of me with my scar. It was like your grand premiere, almost. Him. Yeah, you know, it was your grand premiere, and 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 it's great. And like I said, I I kid, I kid, Angelo. But damn it, the one thing you got to be able to do when you do a quote unquote talk show is be able to talk. And Angelo <laughs> can do that. Turf, you can do that. I know Absolutely. I can do that. So it's like, that's why, uh, seriously, I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to let you two gentlemen go back to your show. I, get, I give my platitudes, congratulations. Thank you, Captain Jack. Thank all you. All y'all for, for being here on this Sunday night. I only took about, I don't even know how many minutes I took. but uh, oh, I, come I, on, Captain Jack. It's your show. Oh, yeah, exactly, man. I'm, I am very, very appreciative. And, and Captain Jack, now. Turf is going to be back on with you. Sometime I'm sure in April Anytime. or May, whenever whenever Anytime. you want on. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh but Captain, thank you so much and, and please travel safe. And if you I know you're doing that cross country thing, so if you make it to Texas, um I'm hit up to Texas. Yes, hit me up. Hit I'm up Terrence Crump, Austin, hit up Texas. Turf. Hey Turf, he, he, where, maybe, where you at? Where you at, Tur uh, Texas? Austin, Turf. Texas. Austin, okay, Texas. Okay, well, good. Because you're the second person that rogered up from Austin. I had my buddy Tim Shanley, the bear guy. Said, hey, I'm in Austin. And I'm like, okay. And, and if you look at the map, when you get down to IG and Facebook, I have a map where I have stars on it where people have already said, hey, come by and see me. So I put stars on those locations. There's a couple of question marks because I'm still waiting to hear from a couple of different people. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Texas is well represented with Houston, Austin, Dallas. I, I know that I saw JD was on here earlier. San yes, Antonio. JD. Or, 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 I'm sorry, uh, it's JD. Why the hell do you say DJ? You screw me up here. <laughs> it, 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 and, and he was telling me to come on by. It's going to be Dallas, Houston, uh, you know, Austin, and uh, nobody from San Antonio yet. But I, I'm going to try to adhere to somewhat of a schedule. So it's if I don't if I don't see you, it's not because I don't love you. It's because I remember I got to drive all the way to California. Yeah. And I got to drive all the way back. That's a lot. And and if I don't get to my house in time, I actually have to change my itinerary because there was one gentleman of space be saying, am I going to be at the at the draft? And the answer is yes, but hey. I don't know I don't know where I'm flying out from because I don't know how long this trip is going to last. I I mean, if you see me on the road and I say, "Hey, uh, th throw a couple bucks this old pirate's way so I can get back home and you know <laughs> eat at the, the greasy spoon on the way back. Because remember, my truck is a diesel, by the way. Now we'll see how much diesel costs across oh, the United States. But uh, I can't wait to do it. It's my last hurrah of going out and seeing people. Uh, Turf, make sure uh, uh, you, uh, was it Angelo gives you my uh, contact well, of information. Course. Jack, you know I do that for everyone. Absolutely, appreciate Absolutely. it. And, and, and um. And also, Captain Jack, I don't know if you know, Chris is supposed to go to the draft also. I'm going as well. Oh, you're going, going yes. Hey, Captain Jack, yes. Surf's going to the draft. Oh, yes. There you go. There you go, man. I promise you, we will have pictures, and Raider Nation is going to see all of it. Pictures, there, videos. Well, good. And if, you, if, you don't, if you don't see me, you do a couple things. Put Look with the obituaries. <laughs> Put out an APB or say... Which of you bitches kidnapped Captain Jack? Because that's the only reason why he wouldn't be here. And I say bitches in a nice way because I know that the if I'm not there, it's because I I got hold up with somebody who is worthwhile to hold up hold up. There with. It is, okay? yes, sir. No, no pun intended on the hold up with, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, yeah, to get us back to a, a PG rating, 
Uh, again, gentlemen, y'all take care. I told you I was going to shut up and you keep making me talk. Guys, take care of yourselves. Have a great rest of your show. We'll be back here uh, Wednesday for Wild Wild West where I make my debut again or re-debut. And I, trust me, I'm going to go into it. I haven't talked for two months about that despicable Super Bowl sh- crap. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna get two months worth of crap off my chest. And, Robert, if you're listening, boy, I've been waiting for you for that bullshit Charger talk that you had on the last time talking with Ant. What the hell are you talking about, man? It's like it's like uh like the kid, like the little kid, like uh Coleman. Right? What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> talk about the Charger shit. But again, gentlemen, have a great night. Turf, hit me up, Angelo. Have a great night, yes. gentlemen, ladies, uh, Mason Wenches. Have a great, great Sunday night. I'm signing off. You're gonna have a great week until I see you next time. <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Cat Jack made a special appearance for our That's guy nice. Turf. That's amazing. Thank you so much again. And, and and Turf, you know, I told you this is how the show was gonna go. When you kept going, oh man, <laughs> we might. I t- I told you I format the shows. If you guys want to look back, everybody that I guessed, I have a segment. I have a format. I want to yeah. ask them these questions. So, um, so I promise you, Turf, I will go on your show so we can talk about any questions you want to ask. Yeah, that's fine. But uh, final segment, and I got, uh, you know, we got uh, left on the Roku channel here about another fifteen minutes. Um, I wanted to ask you about this draft, that number thirteen pick. Yeah, and you, you knowing how the Raiders rosters look, and for all of you guys who don't know, I, I've covered the roster. In so many different episodes, all you have to do is go to the Captain Jack Rackham channel, and I it's actually titled. So if you want to know who the coaches are, click on that. If you want to know about the trenches, mm-hmm. me and, and Chris Kimber from Protect the Shield podcast uh, broke the trenches down for you guys. Um, so you keep hearing draft talk, keep mm-hmm. hearing holes, keep yes. hearing needs. Right. Uh, but in all honesty, like I kind of feel like, we're a pretty favorable position because we can go a lot of different directions at this point. Correct. I hear corner, right? I hear corner a lot and I hear number 13. My only issue with corner is other than Charles Woodson. (laughs) Okay. I don't remember us drafting, at least in my times, I don't remember us drafting a cornerback that first year rookie was amazing. Usually what tends to happen is you need the second year, which is why I'm so high on Jacorian Bennett. Yes. Uh, Jacorian Bennett, I, he's got some serious speed. I think if you give him a chance, he'll do pretty well. Yes. Um, Jack Jones is clearly our number one, but yes. I don't know if I want to take a shot at a Quinion Mitchell just to know that I'm going to have to send him a year anyways or have him learn. I don't know if I want to take a chance at a Tarion Arnold. I, I'm talking about at that number 13 because since December – uh, and Chris Kimber and a lot of a lot of you guys who've listened to me actually know that I've been screaming Fuaga from the rooftop so right. much so that now everybody knows it and he might go as early as number five, right? So I want a lineman. I, we talked about linemen today. I feel like if we're going to end up running power gap or whatever it is that we end up running, <laughs> right. we're going to need someone like Fuaga to right. man that right side. But if you if, if it was you, Turf, and at number 13, who who would you want to get at this point? You just hit it on the head. I'm a little biased, so I usually typically go with Fasano. And the only reason I honestly go with him is, A, a lot of people don't know this, I actually uh, wanted to go to Penn State out of high school. And they actually heavily encouraged me to walk on after going to camp two years. But obviously, I just it just didn't make sense. Um, way too expensive from that respect. but. I want him or the guy you just said from Oregon State. Why? And this is from real hardcore facts and living it. There's a guy named Jim Mahalachek. He's the offensive court, uh, offensive line coach for now Michigan State. Guess where he came from? Oregon State. Guess where he came from where I know him? Montana State. He was my offensive line coach, literally the best offensive line coach I've ever had. Sorry for the other guys. You know, I appreciate y'all. And in fact, during this uh, trip 
for TRS and and myself to uh, head to the uh, <clears throat> the the draft. I'm going to see my old coach at Michigan State and watch him practice in in the spring uh, for sure. Um, and I can 100 percent assure you, any offensive lineman that he's been around that comes out and goes to the league and is highly favored, you 100 percent can bet your bottom dollar. He is as sound as it gets. Jim Mahalachek is so outstanding. I, he's one of the best coaches I've ever had. So I keep in touch with him. I've kept in touch with him. Um, there are a lot of guys that I have running around college and the NFL, if you will. Um, and, yeah, I, you know, we actually just lost one of our guys uh and he actually was a coach at unlv simmons al simmons i don't know if that name rings a bell he passed away al simmons passed away man and it broke us as far as my crew from montana state he was a montana state uh secondary coach and he was one of those guys yeah that you know what i mean we have still i have stories from my guys where you know it, it See, a lot of people think that this doesn't go back and forth in college, but as a player, you give as much as you take. So when that coach is riding your ass, please believe that as a player, there are points in time when you're riding their ass. And Coach Al Simmons got a lot of ass riding (laughs) because there were just some unfortunate things, right? Nepotism. It's just right. It's the part of football, period, when it comes to particular levels and you got coaches and their sons that right get things i'm not going into that part all i gotta tell you is rest in peace al simmons he is going to be dearly missed early 60s uh i I have brother it is and you got man it is such a small fraternity so how i even knew him before montana state my high school coach played ball with him and they both graduated from hayward state Yes, my high school coach, my last year of high school, came from San Diego, and that's how I got to San Diego Mesa because he was like, don't go to any of the schools that I could go to after high school because I wanted to get out of the Northeast. And he said, go to my, go to Mesa. My coach is still there. I went there, got the love, got to Montana State. After my second year of Montana State, here comes Coach Simmons. And he's like, yep. That's my guy. It's such a small knit community still. It, 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 it's a lot bigger now, but back then it was super, super small. And a lot of these guys are still coaching today, man, that I got a chance and I was afforded to learn from. Um, and, and a person like Jim Mahalachek, I'm telling you all right now, that that name you're going to hear for a long time. And I, I can assure you he'll be in the league at some point. Wow. Wow. Well, I, you know, if for all you guys who are just tuning in right now, uh, whether it's the Rogu channel or any of the other Captain Jack Rackham channel networks, uh, I have on with me the Ultimate Raider Fan 32, Turf. Uh, to all of you people in the Raider Nation, you know him as Turf. I know him as Mr. Terrence Crump, <laughs> best running back in junior call uh, in, in in and I guess JUCO is what we used to call it in, yep, uh, in that's what we call it, JUCO. Yeah, uh, the best running back coming out of juco 1994 i was a senior during that year um again uh, if you didn't catch the first hour you really should we talk a lot um <laughs> in the short time that we have left and you giving us your expertise uh i captain jack kind of talked about it when he came on to say hello to you and mm-hmm. uh i had a bit of a screaming match on my last wild wild west show with the chargers representative Okay. Uh, you can watch that on Wednesdays, 4.30 on the Captain Jack Rackham channel. Um, and the screaming match was this guy who is the Chargers rep mm-hmm. somehow couldn't believe that I said we would win the division. <laughs> we would win the division this year. And I firmly believe that. I'm, I, You know, if you guys don't agree with me and you're part of the Raider Nation, that's fine. But I am, I can, again, Angelo can only pull facts. And the fact of the matter is we had the same situation happen to us when I was transitioning from junior high to high school, living with my single mom uh, there in Alameda, California. And uh, we had Mike Shanahan coached for a year and a half. Yep. Art Shell took over as the interim, yep. galvanized the team, galvanized the team. 
Yep. And then the first year he was a full head coach, we won 12 games, made it to the playoffs. Right. On our way to the Super Bowl. And I even talked to Captain Jack about it on Thursday night. I said, had Bo Jackson not gotten hurt in that since oh, man. and we moved on, could we have made it to the Super Bowl? And that was one of those teams. Yes. Right? Yes. And I feel like, why not us? Why not us? And why history not repeats us? Us. history repeats itself. History repeats itself, right? I, I, you know, I'm just saying. So, same scenario. AP has gotten. I don't want to hear people telling me, "Well, AP's not as good as a coach as Harbaugh. AP's not as good as a, a, a head coach as um, as uh, Sean Payton." Right. You know, he's not as good a head coach as Andy Reid. Okay, sure, man. If we're gonna if we're gonna speak facts, then factually speaking, the guy that's actually monitoring AP is a guy by the name of Tom Coughlin, and that guy won two Super Bowls and beat arguably the greatest. Team ever, team of ever lived, <laughs> and our head coach happened to be the linebacker captain of the team, of that, team. that beat the greatest team ever in the 17 and 0 Patriots. That's Antonio yes. Pierce. Um, and we have a former head coach in our offense who's just a senior advisor in Joe Philbin. We have a the defensive genius of Marvin Lewis who is our, our assistant head coach, but also yes. helping Patrick Graham on that side. And I know, Turf, I'm going to say this because most people don't know, you played with Tony Banks. That yes. was your quarterback for a time. Tony yes. Banks was the backup to um, uh, Trent, Trent Dilfer, Delphi. I believe, in yep. that great Super Bowl winning team. That beat us that year, yes. by the way. We were pretty good in 2000. <laughs> uh, All yes. right, so everybody always yes. talks about the tuck rule, but before the tuck rule, we could have made yeah. it to the Super Bowl too. I that remember that in 2000. So, yes. so Turf, uh, like, am I crazy? Was I crazy to be yelling at this guy, trying to tell him that we have every chance to win the division next year? Not at all. And 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 the reason is because of our defense, and you are going to see that like no other. I like to do my homework too, man. And let me give y'all just this quick synopsis. Patrick Graham is a smart dude. He's a Yale graduate, born and raised out of Waterbury, Connecticut. I know that area better than most. I still have several friends. In fact, I actually just pin, you know, pinged one today, you know, because we need a car. I, you know, he's he's that guy. I, I have guys for everything, and a lot of them come from Waterbury. Waterbury, Connecticut. Patrick Graham, Yale graduate, smart as a whip, and his defense is second to none right now. And I'm just letting y'all know that is why you are not crazy, because defense still wins championships. They're trying really hard in the NFL to make it an offensive league as best possible, but until they put the flags on everybody, and now we're pulling flags, it's still going to be defense that wins championships. So with you saying that, you absolutely had the right to argue, yell, because we are going to have one of arguably the best defenses of this season, if not of all time, if things gel properly. Yeah, and, and, and even again, if the we don't still gel there. properly, we still can win. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Even if we don't gel properly, the defense is still going to be top five. And and here's the thing too, Turf, because when we are talking about that number thirteen pick, who's to say that if we miss on Fuaga, um, Telesco doesn't just go pick up Byron Murphy? Boom. Can you imagine throwing a kid like that uh, with Wilkins and Tyree Wilson and Malcolm Coots and I mean, like there, there's Jenkins, so many good things. Butler. Yeah, exactly. Oh. There, there's so many good things that can happen that, that people just need to relax. And um, I want to end with this because we only have a couple more minutes before right. uh, we do it. Again, thank you so much, Turf, for joining the show. Um, thank you. The Ultimate Raider Fan 32, who hit 1,000 subscribers tonight. Tonight, Big baby. celebration for us tonight. Yes. I want to thank everybody. GA Patriot, thank you so much. Thank um, you. And to all of you guys in the chat uh, and, and who've been paying attention, thank you so much. And for all of you who are just listening now, Trust me, rewatch the first hour because you're going to love it. Um, J. Patriot says, Angelo and Turf, thank you guys for a phenomenal Sunday evening episode. 
great content. So thank you to all of you guys who are listening. Um, I, I want to just kind of end with this turf because yeah. I promise you, I will be a guest on your show. And you we'll do so a whole much. content that you want to do MMA boxing. It's going to be but, all MMA boxing. I'm going to make sure the whole community <laughs> will be there. You're going right. to interview me now. All right. Exactly, okay. All right. Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but, uh, but turf. So I'm going to bring up a boxing analogy here, but yeah, I, the reason why I kept yelling and screaming about why I believe the Raiders will, in fact, win the AFC West and will be the the, the road to the Super Bowl. It's got to go through the silver and black. Is because Antonio Pierce has gotten now our team to not be scared. They're not scared of Kansas at all. At and we proved that this past season. So the analogy I'm going to bring out, because I got to close with this, is people forget that as terrifying as Mike Tyson was, when he was in that boxing world, and I know you watched a lot of Mike Tyson, uh, Turf. One of my favorites. All right. Even prior, even like, I get it, the Buster Douglas beat him, but there were always signs, and even in the amateur ranks, there were signs that, well, this looks great to the public for, uh, eyes, but on the, some of the private sparrings or some of the people who knew what's what, they knew certain matches weren't going to go well. One of the first people to give uh, Mike Tyson a hard time is a guy by the name of uh, Donovan Razor Reddick, who uh, the person that promoted him actually became my mentor, uh, which I could talk to you about uh, on, on the show a little bit later on. But um, uh, but uh, even later on, everybody knew the reason why they didn't want Lennox Lewis to fight Mike Tyson was because they knew what was going to eventually happen. And my Mark. whole point again is in like the Vander Holyfield case. When you're not afraid of who's in front of you, then anything can happen. And hey, you, happen to the hey, ring, you got hands, I got hands. You weigh a certain way, I weigh yeah. a certain way. That, you, you got skills, I got skills. So. This analogy is amazing, bro, because you are, I'm telling you right now, that's half the battle. When you know somebody's not scared of you, that makes you a little uneasy. It, exactly. So with that, sir. I promise I'm going to go on the Ultimate Raider Fan 32 for your thank show. You. We're going to close it out tonight, guys. we got to keep it under two hours. I want yes, to thank sir. everybody who showed up. Thank you to the Shield Squad. Thank you, Raider Syndicate. Thank you, everybody. Wish you all a good night. Thank you, Turf, Mr. Terrence Crump. Thank you so much. Ah, yes, in. sir. Appreciate you, boss. <laughs>